Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'm like not awake because I haven't had enough espresso, <laughs> but I think we'll have some espresso today using the Wakako Pico Presso. Uh, Wakako did send this to me and this is going to be a hopefully fun video. I'm here with my friend John, he's behind the camera. What's up? And uh, we're going to be opening this and trying it out. This is the very first time I've actually ever used one of these. I actually have not watched that many videos on the Pico Presso itself. And we're going to see if two espresso nerds can figure this out. I just want to open it and use it and see if it makes good coffee. We'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Okay, so it does come in a pretty nice box and it's like two different sections here. Here. It's a pretty nice box. How much was this? This is like 129, 129. Plus, plus shipping. Um, and then... That's not bad. That's competitive with the base, base level flare. It's a lot smaller looking. And there we are. So that's, that's looking pretty good. I think everything you need to actually pull shots is included in here. Uh, I like that there's a case and all the different components are like pretty flush in, in the box itself. It's a tiny tamper. Is that a tamper? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's a leveling tamper too. It's pretty cool. And it's got um, the ridges on here. So I, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <Be> sure. <laughs> um, okay. So let's, let's take it out. So <clears throat> Pico Presso. All right. Uh, case. This is actually a pretty nice case. Yeah, it seems reasonable <clears throat> if you're traveling with it. Uh, I think this is for cleaning. It's not a WDT. Uh, or maybe it's a WDT. <laughs> I, I feel like these, with these it might be for cleaning, but yeah. Oh, is that a call? That, that, that is a dosing the funnel. Dosing funnel? Not a, not a touch it. Look at that. cute. Wow, this is... That's, uh, that's, that's metal. That's nice. Yeah, it's like, it's like machined aluminum, I think. I would assume instructions. Do we need those? I guess so. Yeah, we, we should, we, I think we should use the instructions, <laughs> but I think I should have done a bit more research on, on this nah, before I... <laughs> um, this is what I would have done too. Yeah, I just wanted to open it and see if you can use it. What do you got in there? Oh, there's a lot of stuff there's in there. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, You're definitely going to need that uh, instruction manual. Oh, that's a dosing. That's such a cute little dosing spoon. I think it is, <laughs> but let's look at the manual to double check uh, what's actually in here. Fat manual here. Instruction book. All right. Oh, warranty stick sticker sticker. Oh, dude, sticker is very important. Here are the instructions. I don't know if you want to take a look at that. Let's see. Yeah. Tell you how to do everything. Um, so, you know, this is the first time I've read the instructions. I've seen people. I've seen people like you take this out, and I do have the, another Wakako product uh, that I thrifted. I found it at a Goodwill. I found the Mini Presso GR, and I think, I mean. Usually these things stick out and then you can like push this them in and all of that. Same DNA, huh? This yeah. is looking a lot smaller than the ones I've seen in the past. Oh, okay. Maybe this is a WDT. So this is cleaning brush. Um, all right. So let's actually try to do this. So follow the instructions. Everything actually fits into a single, um, you know, you like can fit everything in an actual That's pretty package. interesting. That's... Did you see a pressure gauge on this at all? No, no okay. pressure gauge. All right. Well. But um, not a pressurized basket here. So That's crazy. this is, you act, you're actually going to need a grind real <laughs> espresso for this. What size is that basket? Can you use a different basket? So this can fit 16, 18 grams. And I don't know what the actual basket size of this is. Here we go. Okay. You just happen to have calipers here. <laughs> As J. Kim makes, we make everything out here. <laughs> 51. 51. I don't even want to look at that. Is it visually a nice looking basket, I think. Can you De see it decent like it? enough. Um, yeah, it looks okay. It looks better looks, than it actually looks not bad. It's better than my La Pavoni's basket. Ah, so this is a distribution tool, not a cleaning tool. Oh. Okay, okay. So so you're you were right. It is a WDT. So that's hilarious. You're supposed to go out into the woods or something with all these portable products. This is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of stuff you gotta take apart and, and use. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to use this out in the woods, but I think most folks are actually buying one of these for home usage. And uh, what I've really liked with a lot of these portable espresso makers or machines, really, I'll say, they're actually some of the cheapest machines out there uh, to enter 
the home espresso space. And when we look at this, because this does not have a pressurized basket, this is a standard basket, this is actually a very attractive choice considering it's like 130 bucks, maybe 150, 160, if you start to get some accessories and whatnot. There are a lot of accessories for the Pico Presso already. Like people are- like more, these. more than this. Yeah. Wow. Okay. More than this. <laughs> well, this is just everything that's in the machine, right? Like we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need to spend seven dollars on a fancy WDT tool <laughs> from this guy wow. uh, instead of this. So I'm gonna read the instructions and I'm gonna try to actually pull a shot here. There's like twenty-three steps in the instructions. <laughs> oh, okay. There's like yeah. literally, these, really, there's really easy. literally twenty. <laughs> there's two pages of instructions here. Copy or do. Okay, so I I don't know what number should we use? This is, I've already set to 14, which was, I think, pretty reasonable for a decaf I was using. It's actually on really, really fine, I think. Uh, but that's a 1Z Presso Q2. I think pretty good companion, it looks like, to this. Yeah, I like how small this thing is. Tiny. It fits inside of an AeroPress, but who needs an AeroPress when you can make a 23-step espresso? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. Should I do 18? Uh, yeah. Let's do eight. Okay, 18 grams. What's really cool with all these uh, portable machines, these smaller machines, even something like the Cafelot robot, is that there's not a lot of metal. There's not a lot of stuff actually sucking the heat out. And because a lot of these smaller machines were more optimized for dark roast drinkers, because you have a pressurized basket, um, with this, there still isn't a lot of metal and we're using a regular basket and we're gonna grind really fine. I think it should be all right without preheating. How this works is we grind the coffee, pour it in here, we're gonna WDT, give it a tamp, then we take the funnel off, we stick five million things back in like this. Really? Okay. Okay. Like that? Yep, you gotta put this cover. That's a lot less than five million. This is a shower head, you know, 20, <laughs> 23 steps. Then you screw this in, pour the boiling water, put the cap on, and then begin squeezing. Is there a hole on the bottom? You gotta take something off? I think I have to take this cover off. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So there you go. Oh, that looks pretty good. Wow. It, looks, is... it is built really nicely, though. I'm actually pretty impressed with how small this thing actually is. Hey, everything here is portable. So you can take all of this stuff with you. And, you know, I might consider doing that. I hope it's not too fine. It's pretty fine. You know, you, you can do like a dynamic bloom. <laughs> with the other Wakako products, you can definitely do some really small modulations. And like, you can go like, like really, like, do you want to feel this? Oh, yeah. You can go like pretty... Oh, wow. Yeah, you so, so you, can, you can really modulate your flow rate. I'm and... surprised at how difficult it is to push with nothing in here. <laughs> but uh, it feels, it doesn't feel cheap. Um, right. I gotta say that the Nomad feels way more premium, but this doesn't feel cheap at all. I mean, This is half the price of a Nomad, though, <laughs> when you think about it's, it. It's a lot smaller. It is a lot smaller, uh, and it does come in a case and everything. Yeah, when I first saw this on the internet, I thought it was gonna be really cheap and junky but this is um this is i'm surprised at the quality honestly just looking at it and feeling it yeah I, I like that this is all metal like with a lot of portable makers uh they're everything's plastic but these are all like metal 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 or yeah. this is yeah plastic but good <laughs> this is not good q2 grinding <laughs> is not very fun i use this q2 every day for a long time to, to make espresso Sorry that your Titan Rocky <laughs> is still with me. I have this Titan Rocky. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> I'm impressed with your grinding ability. It's okay. I am used to zero RPM grinding with the Pharos. Maybe it's due to this coffee roast level, but 18 might... You know what? I'm dumb. I didn't use the... <laughs> I was I was. I did not anything, use but... <laughs> the, the dosing ring. The cute little dosing ring. I don't know if that's doing very much, actually, but at least it's getting more flat. 18, I think 18 is too much. So this might be the same way. Honestly, not, not that bad. The grounds on the edges, this is not an ultra precise tamper. So some of the grounds from the edges did fall in. Then we put the shower screen here. So the water, hot water from this get pumped in through here and then actually dispersed through here. Whoa. And then that's how this all works. But I think after we actually, uh, we actually use it for a little, it should be, should be good. Careful, Brian, don't burn yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, with no nothing in there, you should get no pressure, right? It feels exactly the same as it did without any water in there. But you, you can see the water flow rate, or like, you can see so we're pushing like, you know, we should measure this, but I think that, I think that number should, I think this number should change, right? If under, if everything's under pressure. Yeah, definitely. So. This is more of the water debit. 
This is another machine that needs metronome style flow profiling. profiling. Yeah, but I think doing this is so much more difficult because you're like going in this way. That got pretty warm. Yeah, it's not cold anymore. Yeah, but um, that's because the these machines are so tiny. You don't lose a lot of heat or it's not like a big heat sink. Screw all this on and we, we do have to screw the lid on so when we're pumping the hot water doesn't fly everywhere and I think that also will help keep the water uh, a bit hotter. It says move the pico press above your cup and start pumping. Hold it, you have to hold it in two hands and then you use your palm to push it in. Eight strokes <laughs> and then you wait 10 seconds for pre-infusion. Oh nice. And then you begin resuming uh, pumping. I'm going to assume that there's going to be a ton of, uh, or there's going to be residual pressure. So we're just going to like, you know, do a quick cup swap, like pump it here and then move it to the next. What a pro. Lever machines, right? <laughs> pump. Well, I don't know. How do you classify this? Like pump, pump machines. Okay. So I'm going to start the timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I don't know if that, that seems a little, I, well, you didn't follow the instruction. Uh, I, I also could have removed this bottom part so we could actually see the Oh, the bottom list. The bottom Maybe we'll list. do that next time. Maybe it was a little fine. You're just making a bomb now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't look at it like that. <laughs> it's going to scorch in the face. No, no, no. So you can see the bottom of the basket holes here. Oh, but, really? Yeah. I think I got too fine. Oh, man. Yeah. You know what? That, that grind setting is for a really fine decaf with the bottom paper filter, so maybe And, and this is all getting really hot now because the, the <laughs> water is going through. And now you, basically there's no way for you to unpressurize this, right? Without like spraying water in your face now? <laughs> <laughs> all right, try it again. We'll reset. Reset. What ended up happening is we overdosed and we also ground way too fine. It, it was basically impossible to get the portafilter filter off because uh, I think there was just so much pressure between the basket and uh, and the inside there. Uh, but we're gonna reset now and we're gonna grind a way coarser. We're using a DF64 instead of a Q2 because a Q2 takes years to grind. And we're gonna just dose 16 grams instead of 18 grams. And I've also taken off the little cover here for the bottomless portafilter. Give this guy a quick preheat. We only have one kettle today. Actually. So, yeah, you can, I think you just leave it there. So I can let this sit and then I think pumping it through should be all right. I'm gonna steal a good WDT tool. So I also did try their WDT tool, but if you're using it from home, I think you should get one of these, these nine prong tools. Uh, the needles are much thinner and it's a bit easier to work with. Uh, I do like that they also have, you have the dosing, dosing ring, dosing funnel, uh, makes your life a lot easier if you are WDT much easier for uh, all, all of this. Oh, look at that. I think this is a perfect dose. Yeah. So that's looking good. And what I'm going to do is I just take this, stick it in here, and I think I can just press down on the sides. Yep. Not bad. It's okay. Looks okay. So yeah. what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pump some of this water through, and then we're going to try to pull a shot. All right. I like that there isn't any dripping either. Okay. That's the little things, Brian. Yeah. So I'm going to lock in the port filter. So you take the shower screen and you put it on top of the basket. Take this here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get that bottomless, beautiful bottomless shot, right? <laughs> Fill this chamber up. I'm a, I'm a little bit above the valve here for filling, and I think that should be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, kind of constant flow rate, or, you know. <laughs> You're the world's slowest vibe pump. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it, it is pre-infusing. Uh, I don't think, I don't see anything coming out. Oh yeah, definitely nothing yet. The chamber is getting pretty warm. Oh, uh, it's starting, it's starting. Oh, actually it looks, looks pretty good. You got a little squirt there, but oh wow. I'm gonna use my palm. I was using my thumb to pump. I'm gonna use my palm. I cannot see what the shot looks like. I, um, looking from down here, it looks, looks pretty legit. Using my palm, I'm just trying to do a constant 
flow rate here. I think I did grind a little bit too fine there. I think I'm, I'm out of water. I should have filled it a bit more. What are you at? 32 grams. Oh, perfect. Definitely a little messy there. That was the first time actually using it where where the coffee came out wasn't super steady. And it seems like because I was moving the Pico Presso around a little, the stream of espresso kind of whips around, which is <laughs> maybe not necessarily the best thing you want to do. This is looking like, you know, looking like a legit shot. It's the nicest crema there, but you know, I, I, it probably would taste fine to be honest. Cheers. You know, so it's actually not bad. It's actually not bad. It's actually not bad. This is um, a roaster in Boston called Render. And this is a, I think it's a Benka. It's an Ethiopian natural. It's definitely tasting like an Ethiopian natural. DF64 SSP multi-purpose in yeah. this grinder. Yep. Yeah. I definitely am getting like a very sparkly acidity in yeah, it, but definitely. the finish is pretty good. It's actually not like over -sharp. It doesn't taste like overly channely or anything. It tastes like it's a little bit of a, you know, turbo kind of profile to me. Yeah, like I'm not getting that super um, traditional mouthfeel. Yeah, so it's on but the thinner side for sure. I, it felt like I ground it a little bit too fine because I was expecting pre-infusion to occur after the first eight pumps. I think honestly the grind size is probably fine. I just need to actually pump it a bit more instead of eight times for pre-infusion. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water there, but not bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm not impressed. Bad. I'm impressed. I think, you know, for a travel espresso, I think I would actually rather drink this over an AeroPress. Right, because you actually are getting texture and you're getting a more uh, impactful drink than AeroPress. Yeah. Uh, and you're not getting screwed by a pressurized basket here where a pressurized basket just mutes everything. Uh, I'm, if we use this coffee on a pressurized basket, you would not be able to taste any sort of uh, acidity in this coffee at all. And you would get no notes. Yeah, I think all I need is a travel case for my DF64. <laughs> <laughs> That pumped all of the water through. Um, I filled it up a little bit below the chamber, but I think I need to actually pull, uh, do a little bit more. Uh, but I'm gonna keep the dose the same, and I'm just gonna adjust my pre a little bit, and I'm gonna be a little bit faster on the workflow, and I'm gonna see what happens. So this one actually opened a lot easier. When I did grind way too fine, it was very difficult to open. I had to wait for the chamber to depressurize. What I am not really liking so much right now is this chamber is getting a little bit warm. And I have seen with uh, some people, they take like a, a rubber grip or some sort of grip to help prevent your hands from burning. I can see it being a problem if you're... Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's boiling water that you're pouring in there. That's, so you that's right. Not too bad visually, this puck. That puck you know, uh, it doesn't look bad at all. I, I, I would have expected it to look a lot worse, but this is the kind of issue with the travel stuff. If you really use it for, uh, for travel is like, you got to do this. This is a lot of work, uh, but at home, not bad. I think as a home machine, this is, this is passable. Oh, that's uh, a thick puck. Look at how <laughs> thick that is. This is 16 grams. Um, wow. It's a, uh, yeah. That is a thick puck. <laughs> you know, I think Brian, if you limit yourself to Camping grounds by streams. <laughs> You'll be good to go. I think so. Uh, but we are making a mess here. And that is, I think that might just be because this is the first time I actually got the coffee out. As you get better, obviously this is gonna be uh, much cleaner. Just wanna interrupt the video real quick by thanking today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online courses and members across 150 countries. You can basically learn about anything you want and when you sign up, you can get personalized suggestions and explore pretty much any topic you want. I've actually been really enjoying a class from Michael Phillips. He's the director of training at Blue Bottle Coffee. I've never seen a class that just breaks down complex coffee topics in such an easy and digestible way. And that's seen in Michael's class from plant to cup, brew an amazing cup of coffee. I just love how simple Michael makes it to understand how to take a complex topic like tasting coffee and taking a property such as acidity and interpreting that as a flavor note in cup when you drink coffee. And that's just because of how these topics are broken down in a really easy digestible lesson format that you can find when you use Skillshare. I also really like that there is a transcript for each of the sections of the video so you ensure that you don't miss anything. 
If you want to learn from people just like Michael, you can use the link below. The first thousand people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare and a lot of learning. And I would urge you to take classes just like Michael's because you can find incredibly high quality lessons across the board, regardless of what topic you're looking for. And I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to Pico Pressoing. Both of us are genuinely surprised at, at how good this is. This is not bad. Yeah, I'm surprised it's, you know, exactly what I would get from something like a flare, I think. Not exactly, but in principle, you know, just pumping, creating pressure. There's not really that much to espresso, right? You just have fine grounds that they're even and you evenly distribute them and you you push water through it at high, high pressure. And this can definitely do that. And I think the basket is of reasonable quality. And as long as you're not doing anything too, too light, I don't think the temperature is going to be a major issue. So this is actually really surprising. I was not expecting it to be so drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations are low here. Yeah, what? Well, I, don't, I didn't, honestly didn't know what to expect because, you know, you, you see espresso machines and there's so much stuff going on. And this is like an espresso machine distilled in its bare minimum. And it's actually really thoughtfully designed. It's so small and compact. It all fits in to one little tiny package and you can like travel with it. Although like... <laughs> you gotta mean, bring a lot of stuff of, if you travel with it. It is kind of an involved uh, thing. You know, it's not the cleanest thing okay. in the world. I filled the chamber up a bit more this time and I'm moving much faster so I can, so we don't drop temp. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna time tear. I'm gonna do, 10, 11, 12. 12? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, nothing's coming out yet. I'll give it a couple more pumps. Give it a couple more pumps. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to... Here, I'm going to... There it goes, there it goes. Oh, it's pre-infusing now. Pre-infusing? A couple drops, yeah. So I'm going to pre-infuse for... You know, until I'm hit, hitting, what, 1.5 grams. Okay. Now I'm going to start ramping up. You need your gym when you have a Pico press out. <laughs> oh wow, that looks great. This chamber is getting hot. The whole Pico press is getting hot, but but this is looking real good. Pull the thirty six. Feel, feel how hot this gets. This, this, is, this is really hot. Like, my fingers are getting... I don't know, Brian. I don't, I don't know, know, man. I have wrist Here? hands. I have wrist <laughs> hands, too. But, I like, when I was pushing this... No, like this? This upper part? Upper part? Like the upper little, part? Let's see. Maybe your, your hand, you have no feeling in your hands. I, I burn my hands constantly. Okay, because this is getting <laughs> pretty hot. Uh, you can feel that the temperature like ramps. Like my hands, like, my fingers are kind of red, man. Oh, are they? Okay. I mean, but, I haven't been holding it as tight as long as you. And it's yeah. definitely not. Um, it's not cold. It's not cold. <laughs> it's not cold. <laughs> yeah, that's espresso. Look that's that. espresso. There's crema. There's layering. There's all that good stuff. It smells all right. The same exact coffee, same grind size, but we did do a bit of a different profile. Pour some out here. The smallest, cheapest profiling machine. Well, not the cheapest, but definitely the smallest. With a real basket, I think. Out. I think, I feel like this shot should be a little bit better than the last one, but I don't know yet. Cheers. Cheers. It is a little better. This is definitely better yeah. than the last shot we had. More texture. Definitely more texture. So I was a bit faster with the whole entire process. So the temperature dropped a way less. And also I was, I did a way more um, aggressive ramp up and ramp down. Tastes much better. There isn't, this is good. Yeah, it's, it's less sour. It's got more sweetness to it, more body. Even with that longer ratio, it's still there. The, the yeah. finish is pretty decent on this. And because of the burrs that we're using, the SSU multi-purpose, there is a nice presentation of acidity there. Like yeah. you get some notes. Yeah, with this SSP burrs, you're always gonna get acidity from almost any roast level. But this is very clean. Um, it's not as textured as some other shots I've had, but I mean, that might be the, the, the longer ratio. I think it's a lot. Yeah, it, that most likely is the longer ratio. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty good. Two shots that we did. The first shot that we tried, um, 
Not bad, it was a more of a shorter ratio, 16 and 30 out. You could kind of taste the defects in, in the user error there. You know, my user error, not preheating uh, fast enough and also a little bit being a little bit slow there. But this one, even though we pulled a bit longer, it does taste much better because I was much faster with the actual workflow. So the temperature didn't drop so much. Let's go ahead and pull another shot and then we'll wrap up. I think you're being a little hard on yourself, Brian. That was pretty good for the first two shots. Not bad, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the cleanup, the cleanup of this is definitely something that you, I think uh, people might complain about. Uh, so I am getting the issue here where I think I could have pumped it a bit more, but you know, sometimes your water can stick to the top because there is a gap between uh, the shower screen here and the actual puck. But these pucks do knock out pretty, pretty nicely. They, yeah, I didn't even knock it there. Just came out. Uh, you know, if you're by a river or something, you can clean it up. But uh, <laughs> honestly, workflow, not as bad as I thought it would be because the actual process is fairly clean. Uh, like the cleanup process is clean. Cleaner than a, a machine without a solenoid valve, right? Yes. Cleaner than like a $300 espresso machine. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, because you can, you can always just keep pumping. Yeah, and, and dry out that puck. Dry out the puck, yeah. I think the workflow is, you know, we pulled a shot now and because there's no water that drips from this chamber, kettle's heated up, we just go ahead and, and get going. And once, you're, once you do that first shot, your subsequent shots are probably gonna be a much, uh, definitely much better because of uh, the chamber being uh, heated up. And actually, I don't even need to stick in the cup. I can just leave it there. This has been sitting here for a little bit with this boiling water. And I think as, as long as this chamber up here is nice and warm, I think we were getting pretty decent shots. Uh, all of this stuff down here is metal, but honestly, it's not like the only thing that gets warm that's taking away heat is the basket uh, itself. So this doesn't really seem to do much. And then maybe this part too. This is not that much effort and the results have been really good, but let's go ahead and just pull a shot. I am just like ending up pumping the uh, the water through the chamber. As in, I think like as long as the actual spout where the water comes out of here is warm, then you're good to go. I think every time I'm just getting a little bit faster at this, which is good. You're now a journeyman. Pico <laughs> Presso journeyman. I think I'm just gonna do constant pumping, see what happens. Oh, you're going for the traditional nine bar. Huh? Traditional, but because this is like, uh, you know, there, there's a gradual pressure ramp up and then it'll ramp down. I'm kind of modulating my pressure. It's definitely a little squirty. Yeah, I mean, my prep on this one wasn't the best, but. Oh, I mean, um, every time you pump, you get a little bit more coffee. Right? Ah, yes. So I can definitely modulate that, but you can you can definitely feel the puck uh, degrading here a little bit. It's good. Get pull thirty two. So I pulled thirty three. I pulled this one a slightly shorter. So I pulled a more traditional style shot there, just emulated uh, what I did before, which is be much faster with the pumping, uh, and then I can just I think I can just pump the rest out, the rest of the water, and the puck should be dry. But this is 16 grams, 32.6 out, definitely of a more traditional style shot and still visually looking really good. Um, and this should have more texture and be very similar to the shot we just pulled before. Well, I think it should be, well, the profile did change, but I think it should still taste good. And uh, let me pour some out. Yeah, let me try this too. No bloom on this one, so. No bloom on this one, just went straight for it. What do you think it's gonna taste like, Brian? I think it's gonna have a lot more texture than before. Uh, maybe a little more harsh because I didn't really pre-infuse. The temperature didn't drop as much with this one, I don't feel like. Okay. So I don't know, we'll find out. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's definitely more. Definitely harsher, harsher more, tra yeah. more traditional. <laughs> yeah, it so, tastes more like what you get at a cafe. Right. So, so that's good to know because that does show you that you actually can do profiling with this thing. If you were looking for that traditional style of shot here, you can do it. I just did one there and this would taste fine in something like milk. All I have to do to change the flavor of the shot is just modulate how fast and slow I pump this thing. They do recommend you do pre-infusion and I am thinking that is the way to go if you want your single straight shots. But if you do like the traditional style stuff, you can indeed do that. So. That's pretty cool. This is a pretty advanced machine for such a tiny little guy. Yeah. You can do a lot, a lot of things with it. I'm really impressed. The, this is definitely very impressive. 
And um, I did pump some of this, the additional water out. I'm just gonna try to do that a bit more. This puck should be pretty dry. Uh, this chamber does end up with a little bit of water that you can't fully, fully pump out. But uh, you know, we're seeing that it's still pretty warm there. I mean, you're getting that, the foaming and everything that you do with like some of these other real, you know, real lever machines, right? Mm. Um, Pumping some air through there. But oh, look, that's a dry puck. Dry. That is a dry puck. And there's nothing stuck to this, which is awesome. And I'm trying to see if I can, nah, I think this is so dry that I got to actually knock this puck out here. I have a chopstick somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there it goes. There, but there you go. Um, I think the basket design might be infl helping get you get texture here, but right, you know. yeah. I'm not a fan of baskets that have a flare. That I mean, that's a dry puck right there, and it's pretty thick too, which is pretty funny considering the machine's <laughs> so small. So far, very, very impressive uh, with with all of this. And actually, if I did just want a cleaner uh, shot, there, you know, not stream goes everywhere. I could just stick this into the porta filter and then I could end up with a much cleaner workflow experience towards the end. You want to see your pretty bottomless shots, we, we took this one off, but you could use this. Uh, you would just want to make sure that you clean this up because this is rubber and coffee is going to be touching this. So I think now let's do something for fun and let's pull this against the decent maybe? That sounds like a good idea. So I'm gonna try to emulate a profile on this, but I think we'll just do 16 in there, 1632 and the 1632 uh, with this. And I think we're just gonna pull the default decent profile and the default decent profile is pretty good. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, so I preheated this and we're gonna do something fun. Have the decent back there. Adjusted the grind size a little bit. So there might be slight variances between the two machines but just wanted to see like, hey, that's the decent, same exact coffee, same grinder, slight adjustments because of the machines and baskets and everything. I'm gonna pull the exact same dose. This is pretty hot. So I'm gonna start the shot here. I'm gonna pour the water in here and pull the shot. Wow, you're like a shop barista today. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Multitasking. Not a professional coffee person, by the way. Well, not that kind of professional. <laughs> different kind of professional. <laughs> Oop. So this one, I'm not operating under pressure. Can't screw the thing on. <laughs> Temperature dropped a little, but. So the decent is running on default, by the way, which has a pretty slow pre-infusion and then it ramps up its pressure. It's like the decent beat you, my friend. Well, I started the shot first, so <laughs> there and then the pressure is going to ramp up i'm going to switch to my palm here is this a default brian profile default by brian profile is not <laughs> not near it man the decent default profile is just so good i have to agree with that it's really good it's it's hard to beat i don't, I don't think i'm good enough to beat the de default profile but 16 in 32 out Thirty-two point two. Very, very close. Well, actually, some espresso <laughs> went out, <laughs> but nicely textured shot here. Layering. That, that does look pretty good. Does look good. Oh, that's thirty-two point two as well. Oh wow. So, yeah, look at those guys. So, left here is the pico presso. Right here is uh, the decent. There's more shot. aeration in the pico presso. It's like maybe I think it's because of the distance that we're <laughs> we're using. Okay. We're not doing anything super crazy here. We're not going to do any blind taste test. You know, the entire point here is if this is tasty, then I think that's the entire point I want to show off. It's like, you know, you could use a machine like this and get a good shot. I already don't even need to try this and I can tell you that the default profile is going to taste good. You know, if you're really skilled and you spend a lot of time, you probably get something very comparable and that's what we're going to try now. Decent shot. Pico Presto. You can get the fancier cups. <laughs> oh, I'm a fancy man. Decent first. Decent first. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. This is good. Delicious. This is good. There's no um, defects in temperature uh, at all. First Pico Presto shot we did, the temperature you could taste that it wasn't hot enough. The second Pico Presto shot we did was really good. 
temperature was much better. And then the third, we did a traditional style shot, but this one, let's try this. Pico Presso. Pico yeah. Presso. Hmm. Well, let me, let me side by side these. You know what? They're close, but I got to hand it the, the default profile. The default profile is better. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's very slightly better, but you know, they're very similar. Um, the Brian defaults pretty, pretty good. So, <laughs> so, so I think the difference is that I'm tasting in the default profile and the uh, Pico Presso is that the Pico Presso finish is, is not as good. I feel like you can taste some of the defects in workflow here where it's like, Hey, I'm a little bit too slow. I'm not pumping fast enough. Uh, whereas this is just, this is a solid shot, pretty good shot too, but still pretty, pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the default for me is just a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. Yes. And the Pico Presso, like like you said in the finish, a little bit harsher, yes. a little bit more, you can taste a little bit more defects, not yes. quite as cohesive. The, I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed by the Pico Presso here. Ag against the Decent is, is not bad. Um, yeah. Genuinely know, not bad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Sully Decent, get rid of these things. No. <laughs> but. Uh, but of course, the workflow is is much more um, much worse than something like a decent, and even something like a Flare Fifty Eight. But in terms of manual, tiny, portable machines, I haven't. This is good. I, I have not had a. There's no better machine right now in this style of form factor. Now I know what you might be wondering. It's like, what about the Pico Presso versus the Nomad? Well, I'll be visiting that in the future and you'll be seeing the battle between the best portable machines, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, that was the Wakako Pico Presso. Thank you so much for spending the time to watch the video. Thank you, John, who's behind the camera, for uh, filming the video and also hanging out and trying all the different coffees with me. And I'll also check out his YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description below. And otherwise, yeah, Pico Presso, not bad. Really great machine, really fun. Uh, does take a little bit of time to get used to, but ultimately makes really great coffee. And I want to thank Wakako for sending this to me and I'll see you guys very soon.